Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll kick off. Um, it's nice to see yet again that there are uh, lots of people who are interested in what we're doing and want to join us uh, uh, via the web link. So that's, that's great. Thank you. Uh, uh, we uh, will start off with apologies for absence. Uh, I take it the councillor Caddy still has technical problems by the looks of it. And he did yeah. send, send an email explaining any, if he had any problems. So uh, this councillor Caddy is the only one we have yeah. at the moment. If you're happy to accept it on the basis that he's got no connection at the moment. Yeah, and I, I guess if councillor Lovelock doesn't turn up, it will be possibly similar things. So, well, uh, yeah. okay, no problem. Um, right, uh, item number two, declarations of interest. Uh, Peter? Unmute, Peter. Need to unmute, Peter. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Gareth might have to uh, explain it. I think I need to declare uh, a personal interest in any debate about the changes on Parade Street because I run a business here. But yeah. Gareth tells me it's not a prejudicial interest, so I can still take part in the debate and vote. That's correct. Okay, thank, thank you for that, Peter. Anybody else? Uh, can I remind you that if there is anything that comes up during the course of our discussion, uh, you can at any time declare an interest. Um, so thank you very much for that. Uh, Mayor's announcements. Um, well, not a lot as Mayor, to be fair, uh, uh, in fairly serious lockdown. Uh, however, I can announce that I acquired a fifth grandchild uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I've also had my COVID jab, so that's very positive. But in terms of mayoral things, I'm afraid uh, we're in lean times. Uh, a presentation to receive, a presentation from an outside body. Uh, Martin, would you like to kick us off? Thank you kindly. Um, yeah, we've had a brief chat. Um, yeah, the difficult times continue, unfortunately. We wait for each development on Fridays. I, I don't see much changing, if I'm honest, this week. Um, there may be some declaration about kids going back to school, but that's probably about it. Um, it's been really difficult. Um, you, you, it's been a lot uh, quieter in terms of people travelling to the area. Um, but we've changed our tactic now from giving warnings to people to enforcement. So anybody, it's clear and obvious that they're breaching the rules. We used to give them warnings and, and send them on their way, but that changed about two months ago, well, six weeks ago. So, for instance, we've given four tickets out today in Llangochen for people travelling into the area when they shouldn't, um, from out the, who, who say they weren't aware of the rules. So um, that happens on a daily basis, but that does keep the numbers down. So we continue with our fight with that. Um, we do quite a few operations at the moment with uh, Denbyshire Parking Enforcement, uh, which is Tim with Evans' team, um, up on the Horseshoe Pass and up on Moyle Varmine things to, to target or just to give a visual presence, really. So we do that, uh, which is going well. Licensing is not it, non-existent at the moment. It used to be one of our main areas of concern, you know, but the pubs are shut, so uh, we get no demand from that. Um, the biggest demand really has been the off-road biking. People are so fed up with the uh, restrictions that they're, they're coming in numbers in their vans. They're going up onto our beautiful uh, countryside, Triple S Island up on the Berwins, uh, up on the Horseshoe Pass and the like. So that continues and we continue to fight that really. So we've got a plan for the next couple of weekends and into March to try and put a big presence out there to try and deter them for the rest of the year. It's it's, a, it's an ongoing battle, this one. Um, it'll never go away, but we try and keep the numbers down. Um, and finally, an awful lot of concern for safety jobs. A lot of people are struggling uh, in this difficult time. We've got um, young people and some adults who are struggling to to maintain their, their mental health and well-being. So we deal with quite a lot of concerns, people going for walks off into the countryside. So. It's been quite difficult, but we are maintaining our front line, thankfully. Um, apart from that, it's been very good, fully supported by the public. I'm glad to say we, we couldn't do this without yourselves and the public supporting uh, the police stance in, in, in stopping movement. So it's a massive thank you from us, really, for all of your support continued throughout the year. And that's it for me, really. 
Mutual cancer, shall we? Uh, has anybody got any questions that they'd like to ask Martin? Dave, no. Hand up. I'm guessing it's very quiet for us as well. So thank you very much, Martin, for your input tonight. Yeah. Uh, could I just have a free call? We referred that incident at, um, uh, was it Tower Hill there? An email? Did you look into that? Um, if not, I'll, yeah. No, no, Gareth, I, no. I did get it from Can you. you? I yeah. I did get hold of it. I, I went through the job, and do you know what? I couldn't find anything that we could do differently. It was one of them nights. I mean, we've. It was a Friday, I think it was. There was there was two calls to us. Officers were on, were dealing with a, a, an RTC on the A5. They did come. It wasn't a case of they weren't going to come. And sometimes as well, it's quite difficult to explain. You know, um, the way things have gone these days is that these people have phoned up the police and said, listen, we've got a couple of kids at the end of the road being a bit of a nuisance. It doesn't get the control room uh, operator's attention when they've got people wandering around real with knives. So it's almost like... Um, it, it might seem like a big deal. It's it's how people explain. So they've they've triaged it on the control room initially. It isn't ideal, and they've thought, well, do you know what? There's something going on, but it's not awful. So we'll put that on the back burner. We will pass that, and it was allocated as a P1. That means it wasn't classed as an emergency job. It wasn't put your blue lights and let's get to to that location. It really, unfortunately, it wasn't. <coughs> And the habit is, unfortunately, with that, is them type of incidents, because we haven't attended, will either escalate or just continue. And that's what's happened here. It's continued for, I think, an hour, an hour and ten until we've arrived. But, unfortunately, officers weren't told of the urgency surrounding it. And when they've arrived, it was a group of drunken kids being idiotic. There were no criminal offences. And by the time we've got there, they've dispersed... Um, if it was a problem week in, week out, it's something we would address on a local basis. We would look at putting patrols there all the time. Um, it was a one-off uh, on that one night, unfortunately. But what I haven't done, and I apologise, but you've just reminded me, is I should have personally picked up the phone and explained to the informant myself. Now, I will do that myself before the end of the week. Okay. Thank you. Uh, explain the delay in getting back. It's clearly not the council's issue on the delay. It's mine. It's my forgetfulness that's in getting back to them. So I will do that before okay. the end of the week. Is that okay? Thank you. Just I promised to reply. That's all. Thanks. Yeah. 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 Okay. That. Thank you. Any other questions? Any comments? Thank you, Martin. Thank you. You're Thank you very much. Arm. Thank you very much, gentlemen yeah. and the ladies. Have fun. Uh, okay, um, Chairman. We Ross, now have, Ross, I guess, Ross, but she's disappeared. But Dave Shields is. Yeah, here. David, about to say, uh, Ross has disappeared, but David Shields has appeared. So I assume that they are one and the same. So, uh, well, David, over to you. Uh, thanks very much. Um, uh, I'm going to try and share my screen if that's all right. I don't know whether I'm able to do that, but I thought it'd be useful. Yeah. Um, I thought it would be useful. Um, thank you, uh, first of all, for the opportunity to um, come and give you an update on what we're doing at um, Wenfrood. Um, there you go. Is that has that worked? I hope, I hope it has. That's fine. Um, so, um, as yes, yeah, so you'll have noticed that you know over the last few months, um, you know, there's been quite a lot going on down um, at the old uh, Wenfrood site. Um, so, I just wanted to give you an update on on, on where we're at. Um, this is the original sort of concept drawing that, that we produced quite a number of years ago now for what we thought that Wenfrood could be as a sort of a pocket park, we called it then. Um, but I think we're sort of, um, we're calling it a local nature reserve now because it is such a fantastic site, um, uh, you know, now that nature has sort of um, uh, taken it over over the last few years. Um, so the idea was to, you know, build a car park, which is down at this part of the site on the corner. Um, and to develop a, a series of trails um, around um, sort of uh, where the old sort of, um, sort of skips were at the top end. Um, this is this red dotted line here is the former railway line, uh, which is also partly within the site. So um, we've been working on that as well. So um, the, the sort of the plan 
um, uh, have been to sort of to do it in a series of phases. Um, we spent we have spent quite a lot of time talking about it and um, sort of uh, developing our plans, getting planning permission. Uh, we had to do a contamination investigation and uh, sort of quite significant investigation, digging over 40 uh, trial holes across the site just to make sure there was nothing really nasty there, which thankfully there isn't. Um, and then we developed a series of detailed plans for the car park and access road. Phase two, which is the, the part that we're in now from November um, 2020, uh, we have sort of developed the car park and the new access road. Um, we're developing um, a sort of a single circular trail around the site. Um, and then phase two is also going to be about um, involved, you know, engage, engaging the community, getting people down on site to sort of look at it and uh, get involved in some of the planning and design of what we do next. But, you know, obviously this year, um, you know, lots of community activity has sort of been uh, shelved this year for obvious reasons. So we still like to get back to that um, and get people onto site as soon as possible so that, um, uh, you know, they can um, uh, get to know it and um, start helping us, you know, to do the, 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 the final phases, which is uh, to um, the phase three, which we're hoping to sort of uh, move into this summer, will be to link uh, back to the health centre along the old railway line um, and also to link um, up onto the canal. Um, both of those um, uh, sort of phase three elements are uh, quite challenging um, for reasons I'll explain shortly. Um, but I'll just take you through some of the work that we've been doing over the last couple of months. So the first, um, the first job that we had to do, so once contractors were engaged, uh, was to, uh, we can't dig into the site at all because it's all sort of, you wouldn't believe um, the site's been closed for so many years, but all the plastic bin bags are all still there. So we can't dig into the site at all. So the first thing we did was to bring in um, lots of stone and aggregate to build the car park on top of um, the site. So we weren't able to dig down at all, which is why you'll notice as you drive past that the car park is sort of fairly raised above the ground. Um, it's a Grass Creek construction car park uh, for about 37 cars. Um, and uh, the idea is actually tomorrow they're going to be seeding um, the, the cells within the Grass Creek with grass and wildflowers. So it should be you know, a really nice uh, sort, of, um, uh, sort of green uh, car park. Um, and then we'll be doing some landscaping, some tree planting and sort of connecting into the rest of the site. Um, a significant piece of the work and a significant piece of the sort of um, cost was the new access road into the site so and we've been working very closely with our neighbor um stephen johnson um who as you i'm sure you know um has plans for a um a seasonal uh, caravan site on the land next door so we have a shared interest in this new access road so we've been working very closely with him um, to make sure that um it works for both us and um and him and actually um, he's given over quite a significant piece of land um, to, to allow us to, to bring the access road in. So that was all part of the negotiation. Uh, phase, sort of the next phase of the site, this is the old railway line um, to um, uh, from the health centre. So we'd like to come along um, this part of the site uh, over the summer. Uh, we, we own this part of the railway line, um, but we don't own all of it uh, to Wenfrood. Uh, so we'll be, um, again, negotiating access with uh, our neighbour to try and come along uh, to link the site back to town. Uh, this map just shows you the, the ownership. So the, the, I don't know if you can see the red line here is Denbyshire's ownership uh, along the railway line all the way back to Slangoffen. And this is the Wenfrood site here. So there's this annoying little bit between that we don't own um, uh, that we're talking to, um, to Stephen Johnson about. We have already negotiated access from our ownership here around the field along the edge of the road to Wenfrood. But um, so if the worst comes to the worst, we'll be able to come along and connect um, around. But um, we don't really want to do that. We want to sort of um, come along the railway line. So we're, we're, we're sort of uh, hoping that we can negotiate that over the next few months uh, and do that work this summer. Uh, the other sort of piece of work that we'd like to do um, is, this is the top end of the site, um, close to the recycling centre. Um, and I don't know if you can see, this is our ownership here. Um, we don't own this piece of land here, but we've negotiated access um, onto the canal. Uh, now it's a very steep bank, um, and this 
this sort of faded area here is um, World Heritage Site. Um, so we're talking to CADU um, uh, about um, the feasibility of bringing an access track up um, onto the canal from the top end of the site. And if we're able to do that, that would be that would mean that the site would be linked back to Fangoflin, both along the canal um, and along the railway line, which um, I think will have you know, fantastic benefits for um, you know for, for the town and the World Heritage Site. Um, and then just quickly, I'll just give you a, a rundown of the funding that we've had. And funding is, continues to be a challenge, which is why we've sort of, we're sort of working in phases. Um, but initial um, uh, allocation of funding from Dempster County Council's town and area plan through through town council. So we're very grateful for that. So that was the sort of the first uh, sort of money on the table, if you like, which got, the, got it all going. Um, we subsequently had some funding um, to match that from Heritage Lottery. Um, which uh, allowed us to do all the development work. We've had um, Welsh Government European funds as well, um, and we've just recently secured um, some more funding from um, the Welsh Government's Green Recovery Funds um, linked to sort of COVID recovery. So, um, so we're, 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 but we're still looking for money um, in order to sort of complete that sort of further phase onto the canal and along the railway line. Uh, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to do that before the end of this year, um, and then the site will be up and running. We've also linked, um, we've, you know, we've linked it to the bus stop as well. So we're really keen that the bus um, sort of continues to stop um, at Wenfrood and provide that link um, from as a parking point back into town. So that's a very quick uh, summary of where we're at. Um, I don't know how I stopped sharing my screen. No, there we are. Has anybody got any questions on that? David, can I just say Ross is there in a voice maybe only, but I don't know. If, uh, oh, well, well, Ross may have something to add. Well, she was. She was, okay. No, she dropped off again. <laughs> Sorry about this. Uh, yeah, Mr. Palmer, you've got a question. Mr. Palmer, I'm on mute. If, um, could I contact you directly with some suggestions? Perfect. That'd be ideal. Rather than talk about it here. No. Right, Anybody else? Yes, Robin. Welcome. Yeah. Hello. Uh, sorry to be late. Um, just to say um, that uh, really uh, great to get an update on on how the the went through. Uh, space is going and um, I know having spoken to quite a number of parents in the town that it, it will provide a welcome uh, route for for walking with um, with young families uh, once the loop is established so um, I know people are really looking forward to it. <coughs> hey, any other observations or comments? Can David, I just add one more thing? Yeah, yeah, just add one more thing, Chair, sorry. Um, I just wanted to, to picking up on what Robin said, we're you know, the intention is that the trails around the site that we're putting in at the moment will be family friendly. They will be um, cycle friendly. So um, we're hopeful that it will provide you know, really good um, family friendly cycling, safe um, traffic recycling. You'd be able to come along from the health center around the site, maybe up onto the canal. So we're very mindful of that. We're putting the trails down with that in mind. Uh, we're also talking to um, Dr. Clark and Michael Edwards from um, about the possibility of a park run from the health centre as well, and they're going to, to, to do that, you know, along with the health centre up to Wentworth and back again. So, and again, that would be, you know, fantastic, um, you know, good for the town. So, there's, I'm really, really pleased that, you know, a number of people are sort of starting to get behind, you know, what Wentworth can offer. Uh, so, and I ha can only apologise that we've been working on it for so many years, and I know I'm really pleased to see progress, but, you know, it has been a long, a long uh, road, but, um, um, and great, I'm hopeful that it will be all open to the public by the summer. So it'll be, it'll be family friendly and it'll be uh, 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 bike friendly. Will it be pushchair friendly? Yes. Yeah, thank yeah. you. We're, we're trying yeah. to keep the gradients of all the slopes down, um, to a minimum um, and the paths are all two metres wide. Yeah, because that's, 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 that's often people have remarked to me there's some beautiful walks around Slangothlan, but there's a lot of them you can't do if you've got a baby in a push chair. Yeah. I have to say the only challenge is going to be the link up to the canal because the bank, the bank yeah, from up to the canal is very, very steep. So um, we're, we're getting some geotechnical work done at the moment that will give us an idea of you know, how we'll be able to do that. 
um, but we're still yeah. very optimistic. Brilliant, that's great. Thank you very much. Anybody else like to comment? Anybody got any questions? That is absolutely fantastic, David. It's great to see the progress. Yeah, and uh, right. look forward to walk along the railway and back along the canal. Yeah. Well, I, I, just before I go, sorry, I would you know I'd like to extend an invitation to, to the town council to, to to you know walk along the site you know as soon as we can safely. I'd like to you know to the you know show you around um, the site you know uh, before it opens. Maybe you know we'll start to think about some kind of launch as well when it's safe to do so. But it'd be great if uh, some members of the town council you know wanted to come and have a look around. We'd be more than happy to sort of uh, arrange that. That's excellent. If you let us know when it's safe for us to do so, that would be brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we won't, right. need any, we won't need any encouragement to join you. Yeah, thank you. So thank right. you very much, David. All right. Thanks very much indeed. Will thank you. No, no, Will there be a champagne reception? <laughs> as, soon as, uh, as soon as COVID uh, restrictions allow us to, we'll do, we'd like to do a bit of a launch, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. Thank okay, you. Okay, moving on. Uh, have we got any members of the public who would like to say something? I'll just bring people up from the audience and then give me five minutes. Well, not even that, really, sorry. Yeah. A few minutes. Well, they can see you. Does anybody want to indicate they'd like to make a comment or shout out if you've not got your camera on? I don't it. So we can. Hello? There's a no. Okay, I'll put the audience. Mm. I'll pop people back okay. down. Bear with me. Okay, thank, you. thank you very much. Uh, right, next we have, if you could uh, mute yourselves if you're in our audience, that would be brilliant. Thank you. I can put people down now, Ken, and not with the doubt. Um, uh, right, next we now we've, we've um, moved this up our agenda and he's disappeared. Oh, uh, sorry, yes, he's, he is here. Uh, yeah, so we've moved, we've moved this up, up the agenda because sometimes our county councillors have things to say which are relevant to the rest of the meeting, so it kind of seems appropriate for it to be at the beginning rather than the end. Uh, so I'm going to pass over to Graham, yeah? Thanks very much, Mr Mayor, and um, uh, just uh, give a few brief updates on things to do with the county council. Uh, I'm going to start with the COVID changes in the town because that's been talked about quite a lot in the last uh, few weeks. Um, but uh, as far as the COVID changes go, I think it's fair to say that I don't think anyone likes the look of them, but, but it's not about looks, it's about the actual effects that we can get and the, uh, the, the um, keeping people safe on Castle Street uh, during this time. And um, so, you know, apologies for looks, sorry that I don't look <laughs> any better, uh, but it's not about looking pretty, it's about looking after the population. So um, uh, we're absolutely clear that uh, Castle Street, as it was before, with the parking and the narrow pavements, was not a safe place to be at the end of the summer. Uh, so many people contacted us to say that they felt unsafe. There were already these plans in the pipeline, but um, before the county decided to go ahead and install them, they wanted to carry out a consultation, which they did, and it took about four or five weeks before uh, these things started to be introduced. And um, the actual uh, changes to Castle Street were done after the uh, initial sort of relaxation of the rules and so we've never seen these current arrangements in a time when people have been able to come to the town freely. Now, you know, we, we really hope that uh, maybe Easter time we could see things starting to get back to normal in terms of people visiting. Uh, and we expect, and I think everyone's expecting this in any tourist location in the country, mm -hmm. an enormous amount of visitors. We saw in August and September there were a tremendous number of visitors to the town and um, we're expecting that to happen over this year as well. And it's absolutely vital at that time that the public, that is the visitors and the local population, ensure that there's plenty of room for them to uh, be as far away from each other in the town centre, going back to the old uh, car parking and very, very narrow pavements is just not a possibility 
profitability. So uh, that's why Mel and myself are continuing to very strongly support the COVID changes staying in place until the social distancing rules start to be relaxed. Um, we have had a number of teething problems over the last few weeks. Um, but just to mention that there, there's been two consultations. There was one before they were put in and, and it was overwhelmingly in favour of having these restrictions. And then there was another one uh, around Christmas time. And again, that came overwhelmingly in favour of, uh, of keeping these changes. These are the official consultations that the County Council have done. Um, and so there is a real strong support within our community that these changes need to be there and uh, they want them to be there because as soon as they return back to some sort of normal um, uh, visitor numbers, they're going to be absolutely essential. Um, there have been a few little tweaks, there have been a few uh, problems. Uh, someone reported to me uh, that uh, someone tripped over one of the barriers and so um, the County Council uh, contacted the person that manufactures them. They, they said that they'd not had any other instances of this. However, what they did, and people may have noticed this if you were around right at the beginning, uh, they came and put some extra reflect reflective strips on them to make sure that people uh, uh, found them more visible. Um, now, um, uh, in Market Street, we've had a one-way system introduced. Uh, there's um, uh, a loading bay there, which people will have seen. And there were some discussions about the position of the loading bay right at the very start. Uh, Mel and myself wanted the, the loading bay by the toilet, but the toilets, but um, the county council put it the other side. And there are all sorts of justifications for it. But uh, in the end, it was moved back to the other side of the road um, between the uh, public toilets and the town centre, uh, which was good. There's a taxi rank there and we talked about the location of that, but um, we were assured by uh, taxis being more frequent in the town now because um, uh, buses, people don't want to go on buses and so on, that it's right to keep that taxi rank in that position because it's right in the centre of town and people can access it. So uh, the, taxi, uh, the taxi rank stayed where it was. Um, the uh, one-way signage on Market Street, I don't know if you've done it. I mean, I, I have to publicly admit that when uh, Parade Street became one-way, I did drive into it about a month after it was first made one-way. Uh, and, and it is difficult to remember when you get into habits, but uh, there are people continually going down Market Street the wrong way. And so um, we've uh, asked the County Council if we can have a bit more temporary signage. Uh, we can't have any more actual signage on it because there's a limit to how much signage can be put on streets and uh, it's already at that limit and people still don't notice the one-way signs so uh, we've asked for some temporary help there and also asked for some consultation with uh, the police to give gentle reminders and so on to people that uh, that don't don't remember that it is actually a one-way street now um so um uh, those changes you know some some have been extremely popular for example the reverse of uh, the one-way system on Church Street has been extremely popular, particularly with parents going to school and local residents, because it means that it makes it much, much safer and it's not used anymore as a rat run. That's, that's really uh, changed. Um, there's uh, one or two teething problems with parking areas and um, the um, Church Street and Bridge Street, the parking schemes there. We're, look we're looking at those as we go forward as well um, but uh, the main change I think that everyone's noticed is the uh, the removal of the parking on, on Castle Street. I'm going to move on to the next item now but it's linked into that because uh, when, when those changes came we very strongly lobbied the County Council saying that if, if some uh, short stay car parking disappears from the centre of the town then we need to have some sort of mitigation for that so that people can access the shops uh, thinking about local shoppers popping into the town, the pop and shoppers as we call them these days. Um, and um, uh, it, it's really important that there are provisions for that. So we asked the County Council for some free parking and we wanted free parking half, half an hour in every car park. Uh, their response was, well, um, we have to have exactly the same everywhere and we're going to have two hours free parking uh, in other towns. And so Flangothland gets two hours free parking and it has to be 
in a designated area. And that went into the East Street car park, as people know. Um, that finished at Christmas time. And so now there are, there is no free parking in Llangollen in the car parks. Um, however, we think it's important that that actually is a mitigation for losing um, parking on Castle Street. And now onto the future plans for that. Uh, when uh, the uh, Arcadis report was being drawn up, the wide public consultation said that there was uh, a very strong support for removing parking on Castle Street with, I uh, have to say, it's been the biggest consultation uh, in the history of Llangollen. There were more responses to that, that uh, complete consultation than to anything that I can ever remember. And uh, they came, and people came out very strongly that they wanted to see uh, the parking removed off Castle Street in order to facilitate having uh, more public space, wider pavements and so on. Um, and uh, the mitigation of half an hour free parking was in that plan as well. So we've got a problem because uh, the County Council has got a one size fits all. Now you can imagine that having exactly the same parking regulations in Rithin, Denby, Carog, etc., it is going to be a thrill. I mean, compare ourselves to a thrill even, you know, but, Towns have very different needs, and we were keen to see this half an hour parking. So uh, uh, just a couple of weeks ago now, Mel and myself discussed with a committee in Denbyshire about relaxing this one size fits all uh, approach from Denbyshire. And uh, the County Council agreed that we, we could have um, a trial of a year in Llangothan to uh, introduce a, a, a scheme, then after a year, see how it it's gone and then maybe it would be rolled out into other areas in the county. And one of the features of that that we feel very strongly about is that this half an hour, it's going to be crucial, I think, for local people and to get local people that are on the outskirts of the town to come into the town centre. Ideally, we'd like them to walk, of course, but uh, those that are not able to, then uh, then that, that would be a really good mitigation. And that's going well, that's been agreed, and we're hoping that that will be introduced in the autumn when the other changes outlined in the Arcadis report or the vast majority of them are going to be introduced in the building of the scheme over from October until about February or March next year. Um, so in terms of uh, the high street looking good, it should look better than it's looked for many, many years, uh, hopefully by this time next year. Um, and uh, we will have half an hour free parking uh, in the town along with lots of other benefits that uh, the Llangothan 2020 report from Arcadis outlined. Um, just moving on to a, another issue now, climate change. Uh, if you've been following what the County Council has done, they've changed the constitution to make all decisions have to consider climate change. That happened in December. And in next week's meeting, a the I would nearly said 10 year plan, the nine-year plan, the years are ticking by so quickly, uh, the nine-year plan to get get to carbon zero in Denbyshire County Council um, by 2030 uh, is hopefully going to be approved. So that's, uh, that's uh, a good thing there. Um, and the last thing that I wanted to mention to you was about the street naming policy. This was actually today in uh, Denbyshire's cabinet, just to revise the street naming policy. And one of the things was that from now on, all, all new street names in Denbyshire will be Welsh only. They won't have a Welsh and an English equivalent. Um, and um, the, the other change was that uh, from now on, uh, streets named after people, whether it be councillors, Shem, or anybody else, uh, that's not going to be permitted from now on. So, uh, sorry, Shem, there won't be uh, a street named after you. In the future. Uh, so um, uh, there are two changes to the street naming policy. I mean, our own uh, new estate on Vicarage Road, uh, Mice Hedek, you know, they've already got a Welsh name. So that's, uh, that's a, a good start from, from our point of view. So that's, uh, that's my update. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Has anybody got any questions for Graham? Uh, anybody? No?
any takers? Yeah, that, thank you. Thank you, Graham. Thank you for keeping us up to date with, with what's happening. Yeah. Uh, and thank you and, and Mel for doing such a great job on, on working for the people in Slangoslin. So thank you both. Uh, moving on. Uh, minutes to authorise the chair to sign the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, anybody got any any comments or observations about the minutes? Anybody like to propose that we accept the minutes? It's a true record. Thank you, Bob. Seconded by Sheena. All those in favour? Thank you. Uh, Right, financial reports. To consider financial matters and make any necessary necessary decisions thereon. Right. Uh, yes, John. Sorry. Are, are there any matters arising from the minutes? We don't do matters okay. arising. That's not within the. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's within the regulations that we we minute it, but we don't do matters arising afterwards. Okay. Yeah, I found it a bit frustrating as in the past as well. So, uh, uh, right, over to you. Go on. Just, just to explain on that matter, it's because when the agenda goes out, the members of the public that, that see it may want to comment. And if you have an item like matters arising, uh, you cannot be specific enough. So the, the guidance is that you've got to have specific just, you know, actions to be uh, agreed at minutes. Things I gather any business used to be on as well, but that's, that's no longer again because it's too vague a, a statement. So there may be a member of the public that wanted to attend and you discuss something under any other business and they weren't aware it was going to be discussed. So that's the rationale or, or the legality rather. Uh, financial statements moving on. Um, I'm not going to put it up this month. We're getting close to the financial year. Uh, month 11 has gone out. Uh, next, next month will be pretty crucial because it will show you the position. Clearly, there's uh, a lot of um, continued loss of income from rentals, etc., which we're going to have to address um, in the future. Uh, we won't forget that it's old. We will ensure that it's recouped going forward. Um, obviously, upstairs, again, very limited higher. So it has been sensible to be prudent. Uh, and then, obviously, we did have money earmarked um, for projects which we've been safeguarding. So that won't be spent. Um, but that means all that will go into reserves next year, which will put actually put us in a healthy position. Um, some will go to general reserve, some will have to go to town hall reserve uh, going forward. Um, so if I just share the financially authorised payments, because um, there are some significant ones here, I just like to explain. You can see my little hand. Um, Upholstery fabric here, TB104. Um, that's a project that Charlie's taken forward again, and we're working now to refurbish the balcony. Um, we've had to, well, I, I got authority from chairman and vice chairman to pay up front to guarantee a price on fabric because the price is going up. So that's the, the total amount of, of, of velvet fabric that has been purchased for the, the works. Bit further down you'll see D Warren he's a gentleman that's assisting with stripping off all the old uh, upholstery ready for reupholstering that um, uh, and I think it's Catherine is it Catherine Susanathan and Charlie will be doing Charlie is a seamstress as well so that work has started um, and we've also um, been working on this the flooring upstairs has been sanded back and repainted now, all this work will be subject to a, a donation. We've, Charlie's negotiated a donation. Uh, so the bulk of this work will be covered from that, that fund. And obviously, uh, um, well, it's obviously, but we have asked um, friends of the town hall who are holding some money for us that, uh, if that if we need it, we could call on that as well. So I'm just pointing out that whilst it's a large sum that's gone out, it will come back in, in terms of... Um, uh, support down the bottom the Griffiths tool hire deposit is actually now a payment um, that is hiring the, the upright sander and orbital sanders to sand down the balcony area 
So I just wanted to highlight those two there, um, particularly because they, you know, I didn't want members to think it's a massive expenditure at the end of the year. Those will, as I say, be covered hopefully entirely by the um, uh, donation that's coming in. So unless there's any questions, Chairman, um, that, that, that is it on the authorised payments. You're muted, Chair. Uh, yeah. uh, yes, uh, I just wanted to make sure the One Voice Wales training fees wasn't the one that I went on because that's supposed to be free. No, these are the ones. These are the ones um, for code of conduct training that you and you and I went on. Okay. Uh, Thank um, you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Th thank you. Thank you, Gareth. No questions. Sorry, Melvin. You've got one. It's not a question, it's just a thank you to Charlie for doing the upholstery because really, I know it's not her job, but she does get paid, but you know, we can't have, we couldn't have had a better person employed yeah. to be able to do the seats. So thank you yeah. very much, Charlie. Can, you, can I just say, you just stole my thunder, I've written down here on behalf of the council, can we thank Charlie for coordinating the work and ask her to thank all the volunteers who were working on our behalf. So if you could do that, Gareth, that'd be brilliant. Yeah, thank you. You said it's so much better, Chair. No, 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 no. no. Uh, uh, if, 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 if people are happy to propose and second the authorised payments and note the financial right. statement. Proposed by Melvin, seconded by uh, Peter Carroll. Thank you. Right, moving on. Uh, that's okay. Next financial statement is on accounting software. Uh, if you recall, a couple of yeah. months actually, Councillor Lovelock asked about this a few months back whether they would be benefiting it. Um, as I have reported as well, we've had some issues with the Excel software. I must say, not as bad as um, Track and Trace did in um, the UK system. Uh, but uh, the more it seems to get copied across year on year, the year, the more you, you seem to be importing problems. Um, but we are, as a council now, doing far more transactions online than when we started. It's at an average of 550 and even 300 so far this year. And this is a year when, you know, we've been sub subdued, very much subdued in our activity. Uh, as it's a homegrown, should we say, software development myself, and I said a bit of input from Councillor Mike Adams in the past, it's okay, but obviously it's not. It's, it's my version and you know when i do pass the reins on to somebody else it's going to be quite difficult for them to understand the nuances and what's required it's also very clunky it, it, it whilst i copy things across like the VAT page it's very much having to copy that and repaste it elsewhere rework all the figures constantly uh, so i have looked at um, bespoke software again largely triggered by the fact that we're moving to this more stringent regime, regime of audit as well. And then by the you know, year three, we'll have a, a massive, or well, not massive, a full audit uh, from the Wales Audit Office. So I think if we could move to some bespoke software, which which would make things easier, um, you know, like, like, for example, to create an invoice at the moment, I have to go into Word, change the number of the invoice, enter the details of everybody each time, fill in the forms, then copy to a PDF so I can email it out so they can't change anything. Whereas with this, with the software, particularly the one I'm recommending, hopefully that you'd accept, it's a drop down menu, automatic number, sequencing number, automatically sends it out. So it's just a timing transaction will be taken away. I've looked at various things. Obviously, you know, everybody knows about SAGE and other systems, but they are geared really to the public sector and not the private sector. But there are three, if not more, but I've looked at three of them, the ones that amuse the most, Amiga, mm. Advantage and Scribe. And, I, you know, they all do very similar things, but some are bigger and more powerful, shall we say. Um, but I've checked with others that have used Scribe, which seems to be more for the size of our council. Uh, and they seem to be more than satisfied with its performance and how, it, how it's used. And the other advantage of Scribe, it has everything that we, we would need at the moment. So you don't have to have any bolt-on packages that you need to get. Like some, you have to get packages for 
um, the, the, the invoicing. The other thing, it's cloud-based as well, so it can be accessed anywhere. Some you have to, you'll see, I think it's Amiga has to be loaded onto the system and quite a bit of cost associated with that. And the other advantage is there's no end of year costs. In fact, there's free support from there in, in, in house um, auditing and funding <coughs> to make sure we get everything done for the end of year. The cost implications I, I've listed there. And um, as you can see, overall, in the initial setup with Scribe, it's the cheapest. And they are the cheaper, should I say, of the ongoing annual costs. There's not much between them and advantage. But as you can see, they've got other things at the end of the year, like running the end of the year reports are chargeable. And so if members would support this, they'd be happy to actually um, go forward with acquiring the software. As I said, we, we did make a provision, um, but I'm confident we could get it out of um, office uh, supplies because our paper consumption, now that we're not necessarily doing um, volumes of printing have gone down considerably and I can hope that will continue going forward. Uh, the other thing is if we could go forward as soon after this meeting, if I can uh, uh, inform Scribe, they'd be happy to do all the setup out of this financial year. And as you know, we have some money earmarked for the election, which isn't going to happen. So that could be used. So the recommendation is that we enter in a contract with Scribe to provide accounting software cover the costs from the 21-21 financial year from the Office Supplies Cost Centre and pay the initial setup out of the Elections Cost Centre Chairman. Uh, Melvin, you have... My, um, my question was going to be about the, uh, the cost coming from the 2021 Elections Cost Centre. Um, are we not having this election now? Uh, well, it moved from February to March the 18th. So by the time the county get to bill us, it will oh, be, in, next year. It will <laughs> be in next year. So, okay. so okay. what we do earmark is the 4,000. We've really earmarked it now for next year, um, fortunately. Um, oh, just, okay. Uh, so so it, it's just that there is sufficient there to cover the cost. I mean, uh, you know, we, yeah, that, that, that's the rationale there. It's okay. not the full amount, obviously, it's just the amount to cover the setup costs. Well, well, in that case, then I'd like to move that recommendation. Anybody like to second it? Mr. Palmer? All those in favour? Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank Unanimous. You. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, uh, planning applications, unfortunately. Uh, 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 Councillor Keddie's not with us, who uh, in these difficult COVID times when we don't get to see uh, the documentation, he's he's kind of our our, our expert. Um, uh, but we're going to do it. No doubt Melvin will have will will have a view as we go through. Uh, first one uh, zero zero seven one. Um, uh, it's uh, extent the extension is for a garage store. It looks as if the original garage has been turned into a store, utility room and larder. Uh, uh, nobody's managed to, uh, from us has managed to visit the site, uh, but it doesn't appear to affect any neighbours. Um, yeah, so it's a correction of a single story side extension. Anything to add, Melvin? Yeah, as far as I can see. Um, if you don't mind, I'd rather not make really any any decisions or, or any recommendations on this as I'm that's okay yeah I'm sorry about okay. that okay uh, has anybody else got a view on this uh the suggestion from Councillor Keddy uh is uh, uh no uh no objection uh, provided the materials used match the existing dwelling uh, anybody I'll, like to I'll propose that Anybody like to second it? So Melvin, Bo, John, how do you second it? All those in favour? Thank you. Thank you. Unanimous. Thank you. Um, right, we've got uh, 0083. Uh, variation of condition two of planning application 03 stroke 2016 stroke 0300 to allow amendments to house types and sound. Uh, site layout. This is on the land off Vicarage Road. Um, 
There are 44 plan, uh, plans attached to this application. They're proposing to change three of the three bedroom houses with carports to five bedroom houses with garage. They state that this is due to improved site use and market demand. Um, um, uh, um, the observation is that uh, Paul is not sure that how it fits in with the affordable housing scheme, uh, which is you know uh, that's out of our remit. The houses being built in the third and final stage of the project would be two bedroom houses, four three bedroom houses, thirteen four bedroom houses, nine five bedroom houses, five, uh, making a total of thirty one. Um, uh, highways have made no objection, and that's all we have. Anybody like to comment? I propose, yes. we, I propose we offer no objection. Yeah, it's it's worth it's worth noting under under this one of the um, presentations, and it might be that we invited to talk to all councillors uh, was, and I, Robin, will remember who it was. I can't remember. Uh, but there is a link between the number of affordable houses that attach to new bills and uh, the number of people who are, are, are kind of applying or or, or yeah, are asking. Um, so it's, it's yeah, it's it's important that we uh, perhaps have a presentation on that and and then go out and and um, explain it to uh, people in Flan. Because my belief up until a couple of weeks ago was that on every build there was a percentage of houses and that was written in law and that was what happened. But it's not like that at all. Um, so, yeah, anyway, we have a proposal for no objection from Councillor Hadi. Anybody else? Uh, let's send it. Uh, Sheila Brindley, thank you. All those in favour? Yeah, unanimous, thank you. Uh, Zero nine two, uh, yeah, zero nine two one. Uh, change of use of existing re uh, dwelling retail units for holiday let, including internal external alterations. It's a listed building application. Uh, conservation consultation uh, has taken place, acceptable with no objections. Uh, and uh, this is a post description alterations to the original application no objections from us on the 16th of december with proposed change of layout to the interior of the building including fifth bedroom utility room and terrace on the lower floor kitchen and general living areas on the ground floor and four bedrooms and bathroom on the first floor the external work includes removal of the central front door Rising, raising, sorry, of the ground floor window sill with new windows, sealing the roof, and repairs to existing woodwork and rendering. Um, uh, Paul doesn't see any grounds for objecting to it. Would anybody like Chairman, to comment? Chairman, could I just share a picture from the neighbour who uh, yeah. I'd like members to see? Um, yeah, fine. She, she's no, it's number 23. No, no problem with the overall issue design but if I share this picture she sent if I can find it yeah, yeah. Um, I've got to find it first sorry <coughs> I thought it was still there but it should be there yeah. can you see that chair yeah you see this area here yeah that is the new proposed ground floor patio <laughs> she is expressing concerns that it would be right outside her window. The windows yeah. open outwards, um, yeah. and there would be a balustrade coming up, and it's only going to seat two, like a, a like a bistro table. Yeah. And, people. Yeah. Um, and she's rather concerned that it's going to affect her, you know, the noise and nuisance, because it's a holiday lack. There's going to be a constant churn of of people, yeah. really, yeah. and obviously yeah. if the balustrade is quite high. It'll, it'll affect the outlook of the building. Yeah. So you just wanted members to be aware of that uh, before they sort of wholeheartedly yeah. supported it or whatever you wish to do. So I yeah. said I'd bring it to your attention. Okay, uh, thank you. About what, what, she's, what she has concerns. She's relayed these concerns herself to the county, obviously. But yeah. she asked if members could be shown the situation. Um, 
Uh, how do how, how do members uh, members feel? Perhaps, perhaps if we um, our, our response to this application was to uh, draw attention to the lack of privacy, yeah, uh, 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 that that the building of the uh, patio, yeah, might have on on a neighbour, yeah, uh, and and draw her concern, Mr. So, Thomas. So we will object, object to one, one element, uh, which is, um, yeah, okay, with concern also a loss of outlook and a lack of uh, potential noise and disturbance. Okay. Right, a bit more than just um, the impact of, of, it's more about the disturbance as well. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind, of, it's kind, of, it's kind of all to put around privacy. So yes, okay. disturbance, yeah, etc. Are people with ha happy with that? Yeah, anybody like to propose it? Uh, Mr. Luke, thank you. Uh, anybody like to second it? You're reluctant to put your hands up. Councillor yeah. Grindley has, I think. Sure. Councillor Grindley has, thank you. All right, all those in favour? Yeah, thank you, unanimous. Thank you very much. Peter, uh, Councillor Carroll, did you, are you, were you in favour? Um, well, I noticed that last month we objected to something where we had no grounds to object on it, and uh, I don't know enough about planning law to know if we can object to it. Yes, so the, if, the outlook and disturbance of noise is a valid planning objection. Yeah. I can assure okay, you. then I'll support it then. Okay. Thank you very much. Can I, can I, can I ask people just just because of this uh, uh, format and the need to have a wondering eye? If you are waving your hand about and can't get a response, just click on and, and shout that you, you want to say something. Yeah, so I don't miss anybody. And particularly if we're voting uh, and every, everybody is for and there's, you know, somebody's got a bit of a doubt. If you shout out and then we, you know, we'll make sure everybody, uh, everybody's view is represented. So thank you for that. Um, certificates of decision. Uh, uh, 0959 alterations to the shop front and removal of internal dividing wall on the ground floor uh, 45 Castle Street granted uh, uh, Bryn Gollu is that Gareth Golly. Golly. yeah Bryn Golly. Yeah. Uh, amendment to reposition the biodigester submitted in relation to application uh, 0357 uh, uh, decision approve. Uh, two, Royal View Wharf, erection of a single story extension to dwelling and associated works grant. Yeah. Uh, any uh, planning correspondence? No, Chairman, not this month. Thank you very much. Right, move on now to Town Clerk's reports. Yeah, it's just the one item that we deferred, Chairman. Uh, I can't remember where now, but there were two reports based on the um, development of consultative joint committees and then strategic development plans by consultative joint, com joint committees. Okay. Councillor Alvin Mile and myself were fortunate enough to attend the. Uh, Gareth, sorry to jump in, but can I just declare a possible interest because um, I'm a uh, uh, employee of one of the uh, councils concerned? Okay, that, just a personal interest. That, that's fine. You can still take part of yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, no, um, we, we had, uh, if you recall, the suggestion was that, that it would be beneficial for Town and Community Councils to go to the seminar before commenting. Well, by the time they did the seminar, though, that was the day the Act was enacted. So it was a, it is, it's a bit late, I suppose, but I still think it justifies putting our comments in based on, on the fact that we, we would have done it on time if we hadn't listened to what, what was being advised. Um, the documents are quite straightforward. I don't think I need to go through them unless members of a specific comment. Um, I think, uh, although it, it was a bit of a taxing, a long, long session, it, it, um, I did learn quite a lot. Um, obviously, the joint the CJCs will, like these things, could potentially have a, a, a also where the shadow one would be set up. Uh, they could employ their own staff, either seconded or employed. The budgets for the joint consultative committees would come out of the precept of the of the principal councils 
and they then would look at strategic aspects. I think the one that was telling, it's, it's quite difficult up here in North Wales, but the, yeah, the idea was if you're in the valleys, you've got like 10, seven or eight unitary authorities all producing a housing strategy. And yet people move between Bridge End and Cardiff and the Vale. So it would make sense to have one housing strategy covering that area. So it's still at a high level strategic. So housing is one and highways would be the other social services, those education, those top level things. And then the, the one on the uh, SDP, um, Strategic Development Plan, again, learn quite a bit from there. You would have the Strategic Development Plan, which mirrors the local development plan process, really. So, and that's what they're suggesting. And again, that would look at your strategic targets, your high, your high level growth targets across the region, um, population growth, employment, land allocations. And then they what they described, which wasn't really apparent in the original documentation, the LDP would be called LDP light. Mm. So that would really be concentrating on site allocation. So like in the previous one, we have to, we've had in the revision, we've got the LDP with its uh, proposals um, on on allocations. And then they asked for the call for sites. I think the LDP light would be more looking at those site specific issues based on the targeted projections. So um, I don't think there's anything significant to change the original commentary going in. And if members are happy, I'll just, although it's after the date, I will provide that to show that we did comment and I'll, I'll give the rationale yeah. later. Right. Can I, uh, John? But it's a, as much a query as a, a, a recommendation. Uh, if, we, if we look on the section two, and section four, uh, you recommend, uh, Gareth, that <coughs> consideration be given to the inclusion of the areas of outstanding natural beauty that exist within the area. Um, and as I, I may be wrong, but as I understand it, the voting members are the um, chief execs of the county borough councils and Snowdonia National Park. Um, if there are three areas of outstanding natural beauty within uh, within the area. So if they were on there, that would be almost half the number of voting members. So it, basically, I was suggesting that a representative of the areas of outstanding natural beauty that exists within the area um, should be included. Okay. Yeah. And, and that, that would be in section four as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, anybody else for any comments or observations? Uh, what are we, yeah, um, uh, anybody propose uh, that, yeah, our views are forwarded. Yeah, Melvin, yeah, thank you. With that rejoinder of um, John Palmer's. Yeah, Sheena, Sheena Grindley, yeah. So with the addition of Mr. Palmer's additions, yeah. Uh, you could do that, Gareth, that would be brilliant. Could I, no, suggest, you've got your hand. Could I just suggest, Chair, if I say last time, it's easier if you ask anybody against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then if, if, if there's nobody against, everybody's for it. So it's easier yeah. to have one yeah. hand than nine. Anybody against? No. Thank you very much. Sound Thanks. advice, Carlos. Thank you. Uh, I, I learnt it from somewhere else, German. Well, yeah, it's, it's giving support to an old man, Gareth. Yeah, and that's yeah. Um, what good. about that, that? Might miss out possible abstentions. <laughs> that could miss out possible abstentions. So we could say any objections or abstentions. Okay. I guess. It's yeah. Anybody say, or abstaining in the yeah. future? Uh, right. Correspondence, Gareth. Yes, we had some prior to, well, when the agenda went out, and as, you, as I said, you know, we tend to get stuff in after, which we should really consider, because it's, otherwise it's a month on. So there are a few others that come in. The first one is really just to note it's um, it's the requirements to prepare our accounts in due, due time. They're usually to be finalised by July, and that's moved to August. And then the retrospect then September would be the ultimate deadline, and that's moved to November. So there's been a little bit of uh, play. Um, I'm confident, you know, I've already, as I say, we appointed our auditors last month. Um, 
they've already contacted me to do our internal audit, our, um, oh, I forgot what it's called, it's the assessment of all our processes, not the finance. So that's in, 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 in train and again, hopefully we'll be able to present everything early in April and then we'll be well ahead to get the necessary uh, authorizations in and all the notices done. So I have no concern there, so it's just a matter of note that. The next one is guidance from the Public Ombudsman for Wales. Um, uh, it seems strange it came out of the day when uh, uh, Jackie Weaver was on television, but I don't think there's any any actual connection with what was happening in England. Uh, but it's uh, again, it was out on the 5th, very time, time scale, so we managed to get it on the agenda. Uh, and if members want to comment, obviously, because it's, it's about individual you know, actions of members, um, if you wish to comment, then the, the link is there to the website. And I urge you to have a look. Uh, next item is from Mr. Davis. Um, he requested the um, recording of last meeting under a freedom of information request. But I did remind him that uh, under under the you know freedom of information, it's information is provided to him. But su subsequent to that, our standing orders uh, does do say that if um, people wish to broadcast our our um, meetings. They first have to get the express permission of the council, so we need to consider uh, if we're going to allow its express permission in in, to, in this instance and what we do in the future if people keep on coming back with information. I, I, uh, sorry, do you want to go first, Mel? You muted, Mel. Um, I'm yeah. Well, I've got no. I, I don't think we should have any objection to that, really, as no. long as um, when it's retransmitted, you know by Mr. Davis or by whoever, um, that it's retransmitted in its entirety. Um, we don't have any bits taken out of it. I, I think, you know, it should be, uh, uh, it, we don't want any editing doing. So mm. yeah, fine. I think we should do it as long as it's in its entirety. Yeah. And, and I also think that um, if anybody else is coming along who wants to uh, do the same thing, we should allow that but with the same mm. with the same conditions on it. That's my little yeah. thoughts on it. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, um, I, I've given given us some thought, and um, I've absolutely no issue with people having the video. And I would suggest that perhaps uh, we currently the rule we have at the minute is um, that uh, once the minutes of a previous meeting have gone, we kind of get rid of the yeah uh, the, the the recording. Uh, what I'm going to suggest is that we keep uh, an archive of the recordings of our meetings for as long as we're recording them. Um, uh, and that rather than people having to ask, we place the link to uh, that meeting, the, the URL, we place the link to the meeting on the council Facebook page and also the council website for those people who don't use Facebook. Uh, uh, and that we give permission to repost it just as a matter of course unedited yeah uh and that that's quite important that, that you know people are free to put it out there as long as they don't edit it or or cut it up and just use little bits of it uh, because things could be taken out of context sheena sorry robin was first sorry you've had your hand up a while ago robin uh, no problem. Um, it was just to say, yes, I agree with all of those. Um, I guess it would just be worth uh, if, to see if there's some technology out there that um, that kind of stops the editing um, and whether you have to produce, you know, potentially add that into your um, post or any, anything when um, when you share it. Um, but like, it's a, like a PDF version of the video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sheena, you had your hand up. Sheena, you need to wear you think? I can't see you here, sorry. Hang on, bear with. There you go. Can you see me now? Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah. 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 I was going to say, I've got no objection to it, but should we remind people who come to speak to the council uh, that it will be recorded and yeah. people will be able to, you know, yes. just manners to let them yeah. know. Yeah. 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 That's 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 an excellent idea. Yeah, uh, Peter. A uh, couple of things. 
You're yeah. Sorry. You can't. You're broken up, Peter. Switch your video off, Pete. Yeah. Can't see you talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. If we're yeah. holding on to data of any form, yeah. I think we need to set the date beyond which we won't keep it, um, or a, at least a data policy. It needs to be in our data security policy and various policies like that that Gareth deals with. Yeah. Um, if we have it on something like a YouTube channel, then there will be a full unedited version out there. So if we were to use our own YouTube channel and upload to that, and then encourage people to share that rather than giving them the raw data, which then they potentially might edit or not show in full. Yeah. 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 Anybody else? You had your hand up. Yeah, Mr. Big, Council Baker. Carry on. Uh, I'm a bit concerned as to whether people would not edit uh, the video, you know, you, you can't um, stop people messing about with it. Um, Councillor Lovelock made a good point, but um, how can you guarantee that people will not uh, edit? Uh, I'm guessing we would be asking people in good faith, yeah? Uh, well, not <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I believe, I believe, and I've, I've not actually, I've not seen the legislation myself, but going forward, um, ongoing, uh, post-COVID, um, there is, um, if I'm right, Gareth, some, some legislation uh, coming that will mean we'll need to give video access uh, to people yeah, uh, going forward after COVID. Um, so uh, we are definitely into the zone where videos is, is the way to go. It's quite interesting, isn't it? Because 12 months ago, 12 months ago, um, we we were discussing, before COVID, it might have been 18 months ago, we were discussing video in our meetings and making the video available to people to, to watch. Um, so I don't know whether it's worthwhile having a look, um, Gareth, to see whether there's, there's any way of securing... The, the video the length of it etc I don't know I'm well, not technically uh, to know. Uh, um, first of all I'll be bringing a full report on the new act um, next yeah. month yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I'll, I'll look into what just the Karen said about I think we have got a uh, YouTube channel which we, we did for that um, uh, what was it Beautiful Landscapes video either so yeah. it's that way of Posting there means they can only watch as a yeah. copy. And when you copy, they copy the whole thing. Then clearly that would be the way forward. Um, I've learned how to video edit, so yeah. next learning curve for this bit. So I'll make sure it goes out as secure as possible. Um, and, Thank you. So yeah, so let's just check what we're agreeing. Um, we, we are agreeing that we're going to keep a video archive. We're agreeing that uh, to give uh, as much public access as possible to anybody that wants to see it, the link will be on the council Facebook and the council website, and that uh, we will uh, we will be stating as part of the uh, the deal that we're giving people permission to post an unedited version of our meetings, the whole thing, and not snippets of it. Is that what we? I think rather than allowing them permission to post, we should allow them permission to share the original that we've uploaded to a council channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I think that's what I meant. I might not have said it, but I think that's what <laughs> you're just using better words than me. Yeah. Uh, that's I mean, all new chairman. I'll, I'll, we'll obviously, we have got our document retention and uh, discussion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We probably have to perhaps bring it in because the you know I, I know I bought this uh, uh, two terabyte, but it's yeah, yeah. Quickly, so an archive is going to you know take a lot of space. So yeah, yeah, yeah. A month it's out on on you know uh, YouTube, it'll be there. I'm, I imagine forever until we take it away. So I'll just look yeah. at the policy and uh, maybe three to six months or something. Okay, just thank you. The size yeah. of these files, the yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, 
it's quite flattering to to think that there are people out there uh, that want to spend their time looking at us having our discussions. Yeah, uh, guessing this long in COVID, Netflix must be getting a bit boring. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, thank you, uh, uh, thank you, um, uh, Gareth. Um, uh, the correspondent shares the uh, uh, letter from the chair of the Pluton Range Food and Drink Group. Um, they're requesting letter support for a club with application to the Plavania Wind Farm Fund between Thagoshan Sea Valley Food and Drink and the Clujan Range Food and Drink for the Meat Producers event and the Taste of Wales campaign. The bid is secure three thirty thousand pounds for a period until December twenty twenty two. So just to consider whether we'd like to offer us a letter of support for that project. Yeah, letter of support. Robin, you've got your hand up, do you want to comment? Um, just to say yes, I, I would propose that we support that, but also just to ask, um, I did see an email related to that, um, and I think I forwarded it to you, Gareth and, and Shem, um, just that it was asking for two letters, because uh, they were wanting to show um, kind of community support as well as town council support and asking yeah. whether Chittislow could also submit a letter. So I, I know we don't have a Chittislow meeting in the time frame, so I was just wondering if that would be a, a consideration. Yeah. Uh, Gareth? Yeah, I appreciate that. But if the Sound Council sends one, you're all on Chitslow anyway. So it's, mm. uh, you know, the Chitslow isn't separate to the Town Council, is it? So if the Town Council support it, then by default, Chitslow. So we, 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 you know, if the, I can happily do two letters mm -hmm. because if you approve tonight, the members of Chitslow will approve it anyway. So yeah. 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 Uh, Mr. Palmer. Um, in the, uh, I, I think it's this, the, the same thing that supported the um, Christmas festival in the past. Um, so I would be delighted to support it. And perhaps if they want the Christmas festival to write, to write a letter, we could do that as well. Yeah, that we could do that as a community group. Yeah. Yeah, that would, that would be good. Okay. Yeah. Um, just, just. Touch it, just brought a conversation that I had in mind, which might be something we consider for future meetings and the us, us kind of crawling out of COVID. Um, there was a suggestion, and I can't remember what forum it was um, that, 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 that I had this conversation, but what the suggestion was that we um, uh, uh, start to utilise the town square, yes? And, and perhaps, and it might have been in one of the um, community conversations, thinking on it, uh, that, that there's a possibility going forward uh, of us uh, giving people access to the uh, to Centenary Square to have a store, either a local kind of community group that wants to kind of um, uh, uh, let itself be known again. And the other suggestion was uh, that there might be local producers out there who need to kind of re-establish themselves as being out there really after COVID. Uh, so it might be something that we might consider in a report in the future, because I think both of those ideas are sound. John? That would be a suitable item to bring up at the next uh, uh, asset management meeting, wouldn't it? As, uh, yeah. as yeah. it forms part of our assets. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Chairman, just to say there is a proposal coming forward which I was going to take to the asset management. Yeah. I mean, anybody, uh, we have an agreement, anybody's free to use a square at any time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's something I'd like to take to asset management to get their full approval. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I mean, so I, I would suggest that if we're doing it in the short term anyway, we, we kind of do it uh, kind of free so uh, businesses are, are able to promote themselves, yeah, and perhaps yeah. going yeah. forward, yeah, if people wanted to purchase a space they could do, yes? But in the short term. At the moment, Chairman, there's no charge, so that's up to asset management again. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, so have we got a proposal that we, that we got a proposal we need yeah. to make? Yeah. yeah? Right. Uh, considering not a letter of support, any, uh, anybody like to propose that? Thank you. Um, Seconded uh, by uh, Melvin uh, uh, proposing, Robin uh, Lovelock, anybody uh, against or abstaining? Right, unanimous. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, uh, next one, um, uh, as you know, we, we, we agreed to be partners in the Naked Take Takeaway pilot project. 
Um, there's now a request to, for a, the service level agreement between us and uh, Mould and other partners, Kairos and etc., have been prepared by Mould um, officers and um, in line with our previous resolutions, A, to agree to work with them and B, to nominate P Councillor Peter Carroll as our representative. Um, we just need authority for me to sign that SLA because uh, I want to get it back as soon as possible. There will be subsequent SLAs between us and participating businesses in Llagodling if any come forward that we would be working with. But this is just the SLA between us and Mould at the moment to be a delivery partner. Chairman. Yeah. Anybody like to propose that we do that? I propose that. Uh, John Adel, thank you. Peter Carroll seconded it. Thank you, Gareth. Uh, no, nobody against or no? No, no yeah. nobody against, sorry. Sorry, uh, request, um, a letter from the food bank, I've got friend food bank. Uh, as members will know, they've moved into the premises off the Market Street car park. Uh, and they've got funding from um, um, other sources to allow them to pay the rental and do conversions to provide uh, catering facilities. But what they lack are basic office pots and pans, laminators, um, scissors, staplers, you know, um, all those kinds of things, uh, guillotine, and they'd like to, uh, well, it, it's funding to, from, say, £300 towards setup costs. Clearly, we've not had a community grant scheme this year because of circumstances, and this would have been a, uh, eligible for that. So, you know, if members are, are minded, uh, whether you'd like to consider offering them a grant um, for that purpose. The, f the food bank do do excellent work. Melvin. You're muted, Councillor. Sorry. Um, uh, I'm just wondering, is 300 quid enough? Should we offer them 500 pounds? Or is 300 quid enough? I think we should offer them 500. They do a great job. Anyway, that's my proposal. They'll be given five. Um, Anybody like to second Melvin's proposal? Uh, Councillor Grinley? Or uh, any objections or abstentions? No, that's unanimous, Gareth. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item, I think it's the last, isn't it? Uh, again, late, late um, decisions by like, like tomorrow on this one. Uh, as you know, the, the independent review panel, panel for Wales every year does a review of payments, etc. And they do go around town and community councils across Wales, although, again, it's the first time this has come forward. In essence, they're looking as, as to whether we would be willing to be part of that consultation process and uh, actually get involved. I'm not sure it would be what it entails. It might be just speaking to myself, or perhaps myself and a few, and the, and the, the mayor or, or a small group of councillors. It's just to gauge um, a view of, of a, all, all sizes of councils across Wales as to what the panel's uh, structure in, words, in, view, in view of payments is. Uh, I can't see any reason why we shouldn't take partake of it. I think it'd be quite useful to be seen to support them, Chairman. So, but, yeah. uh, just for members. Any, any, anybody like to propose that we um, participate? Come on. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Grinley, seconded by Councillor Mile. Any objections or abstentions? No, unanimous, thank you. Uh, Receive report submitted to the Town Council and determine what action are any to be taken. Right, so anybody no, that's a, tiny uh, town team annual report. Well the first one is outside bodies. Is there anybody um, Oh sorry. I've uh, not I, yeah, I've not got that on mine. It's not it's difficult at the moment, uh, obviously because there's not a lot going on. Uh, is there any, any outside body meetings? Anything happening? Yeah, it's it's um, it's potentially something we need to be a, be aware of. That um, a lot of the groups that 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 there are around town uh, might need our help and support, even if it's just encouragement going forward. Because um, I suspect there are some groups that are going to struggle to reform once we're out of COVID because people have got out of the habit or, yeah, have uh, found other things that they want to participate in. So going forward, I think we need to keep our eye on that, yeah? 
Uh, so another thing, uh, Langoff and Taddy Town team annual report. Yeah, that the report's been presented um, as uh, David Davis says every year. Um, just yeah. to really to accept, the, to accept the report and note um, again that you know five hundred hours. Yeah. I mean, various calculations that could be from five thousand to seven and a, seven and a half thousand pounds worth of of yeah. uh, activity that's been undertaken in the town. And uh, it's just nice for us to formally propose, if you wouldn't mind, yeah. um, noting the report and thanking them for their efforts and what they do. Perhaps, um, perhaps on, on the council's behalf, Gareth, you could write to um, mm -hmm. the Tidy Town team, yeah? Thanking yeah. them very much for their, their hard work, because I know that they've continued uh, to work during COVID, yeah? yeah. Uh, when they've been able to, and they, they continue to do really still in work. So can you, if you send a letter to David Davis, thank you and him and his team, that will be brilliant. Okay, thank you. Just propose second that, can we? Oh, sorry, Councillor Palmer. Councillor Palmer, you're, yeah. you're dead. Councillor Palmer, well, your sound is. Right, David, David's done a, a remarkable job in organising the uh, COVID injections and the flu injections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that should be raised in the letter. Yeah. For Please. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. And everybody's happy on that letter, Chairman. Just everybody before. happy? Any any objections or abstentions to us sending the letter? No, thank you. Uh, notice of motion, uh, Mr. Palmer. Yes. <coughs> um, Can I just, sorry, Chairman, just remind sorry. you that Councillor Palmer will present the motion and then you've got to get a seconder before you can debate. If it's seconded, then you okay. can. Okay. Right. Okay, so. Would you like to present your motion? Yeah, I will. Uh, what ha happened fairly recently is that um, a section of road um, has that's been used continuously. Just, 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 just for procedure. Mm -hmm. Just say what's in uh, the Councillor Palmer, Councillor Palmer is moving a notion uh, to discuss. Yeah, uh, what you've got in front of you. Is there anybody would like to second his motion? Thank you, Councillor Haddy. So, being seconded, any abstentions or, or yeah, okay. Uh, <coughs> Councillor Palmer, thank you very much. I'm sorry to interrupt. Okay, this is a result of um, some uh, an action that's been taken recently, uh, a section of uh, drive that's been continuously used from what I can gather. Um, Pedestrians have been uh, denied access, and um, there's, there's a problem. That, there's uh, an issue going forward with that, um, but and, and I, I don't want to go into that because it's. Uh, but that's the thing that uh, made me think about this, and there must be a lot of um, long-established access and footpaths around in and around the town that are not um, def on the definitive map as rights of way and if we could get uh, some idea of where they are what they are and, and how often they're used it could be they could be um, established as formal rights of way uh, and that's what I wanted to do, is to, to gather this information from people that know it well. And there are people that have a, a good idea of what's available um, so that we can uh, <coughs> establish these, these, mm. uh, the, these uh, used footpaths and access uh, at former rights of way uh, with Denbyshire County Council. Yeah, Robin? Um, thanks, um, Councillor Palmer. I think it's a, a great idea and um, I think it actually ties in time-wise um, with a campaign the Ramblers are lead leading, I believe, because I think there's a particular time period in which you need to register those um, kind of missing routes um, so that they get onto the next update or, um, you know, or potentially could be lost. Um, so I think it would be very timely. Uh, to be doing that and to potentially fit into that campaign. We'd need to find out a bit more information. Um, we did talk about it uh, about a year or so ago uh, when we were awarding one of the, uh, the running club uh, some funding as to whether they could help with that as well. Um, so, yeah, those are just some thoughts. Uh, 
Councillor Hardy. Um, our two uh, experts on the subject were, were uh, recent uh, George, uh, Councillor George. Uh, he always used to report on um, rights away, but it, in the locality, uh, Les Fox. I know he's getting a bit long in the tooth, but he's very knowledgeable on uh, rights away. But uh, Councillor Lovelock is correct. There is a cut-off point by which time you have to um, put forward uh, rights away to the definitive map inclusion. Otherwise, they de facto would cease to exist. Uh, it, in general, it takes 15 to 20 years from uh, first registering to achieving that because rights away aren't really high on the agenda in, in terms of uh, financial uh, expenditure by county council. But that said, the important bit is to register in the first place. Yeah, okay. So, uh, what, 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 what... Peter Carroll's put his hand up for a while, Chairman. Sorry, sorry, Peter. He's still muted. Sorry, Councillor. Um. For OS maps to look for missing paths. And um, they're moving on to the next phase at some point soon, which is walking those. So it would be worth getting in touch with them to see what needs walking. Um, and the local rappers might know about that as well. I, I'm, I missed the first part of that, Pete. Um, the, the Ramblers Association have finished the first phase of their project, which was a <coughs> map research based project to find out what isn't on the current maps. Uh, and their next phase is to get people out walking them. But obviously, any local knowledge as well would be really useful in that. But, uh, yeah. So what, what are we proposing? Are we proposing <laughs> that we, form, uh, 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 we, we, we um, agree to uh, Councillor Palmer forming a working group? Yeah, local residents and interested parties to kind of move this forward and try and coordinate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the different right. individuals and groups might have information. Yeah, yeah, Chairman. I think it's okay. okay if you if you want to pursue this, I'll arrange with Councillor Palmer and any other councillors want to put the name forward. Yeah, uh, brilliant. We'll, we'll try and contact as many groups as we can at the moment. Obviously, whether we're going to do it virtually. Um, the other one yeah. would. I, is it got um, a gentleman that? Oh, he's still he is still actually chair of Walkers are Welcome. Yeah. Uh, I used to be a teacher. I was talking yeah. about oh, Humphrey. Humphrey. Humphrey is oh, another yeah, yeah, yeah. Get on. So, yeah. because we have still got walkers to welcome, although it's not sort of defunct, so it might be useful so, to figure that out so as well. So, can uh, we have to propose that Councillor Palmer and the clerk, yeah, uh, move towards, yeah, forming a group and, and make the necessary invitation? Somebody to propose that. Melvin, thank you. Bob, seconding it. Uh, anybody like to object or any uh, negative? Right, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Just to volunteer my husband if any need running uh, around the valley. <laughs> He's still trying to beat my daughter, though. <laughs> Well, I think uh, yeah. I think she did beat him the other day, and uh, and I think he's got the crown back now. So uh, yeah, you, they are they are at war on that one. I think. Uh, right, um, I, me now, I guess. Um, uh, I would like to propose a notion of motion, uh, which is to do with the social distancing in town at the moment. Uh, I guess I'm looking for a seconder. Yeah, Councillor Green. Uh, right. Okay. So um, I apologise. I've, I've written this down just just because I've 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 got quite emotional about this uh, because there's been uh, a, 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 a lot of reaction to the bollards outside recently. Um, so uh, I apologise for reading this. It uh, when I timed it, it took about four. Minutes. It also stops me rambling. For those who know me well, I could take half an hour over this. Um, uh, way back in March 2020, COVID had only just arrived. In an article in the Wrexham Leader, an ex-county councillor and mayor of Flangothlan alerted us to the dangers. He described the potential risks posed by the large number of visitors we get in Flangothlan, the risks to the vulnerable, the ill and the elderly, the need for everyone to follow the rules and the importance of us socially distancing and lockdown. 
When reflecting on the government's advice, he stated that to not take note of what people are telling you is just stupidity. He even went as far as to state, if I do catch it, I will die. Since March 2020, nothing has changed. We are still just as vulnerable. The virus has mutated. The newer strains are easier to catch. Social distancing when we are out and about is as important now as it ever was. We need to resist becoming complacent or dropping our guard. It's serious. I have lost COVID and have relatives working in intensive care units. They put themselves at risk every day and are watching people die every day. In July, the Town Council considered the measures that Denbyshire County Council planned to take in response to COVID. Denbyshire developed the plan for reasons of public safety uh, following the pandemic and in accordance with Welsh Government guidelines. The only part of the document we disagreed with was the use of Centenary Square and the area adjacent to the Town Hall where they wanted to place tables and chairs. The plan contained a few measures, but the temporary widening of the pavements to help so with social distancing proved to be the most controversial. The plan was delayed and delayed and delayed because of objections and reviews. Throughout the summer, Tlangothlan residents asked me and other councillors, I believe, when something was going to be done to help them socially distance. With the influx of visitors when lockdown was eased, some residents told us that they didn't feel safe and were afraid to go out. Many residents complained about there being so many visitors in town and the lack of action to address the risks of COVID. The mantra uh, started to be, when is somebody going to do something? The modifications, including the bolts down curbing, weren't completed till November the 2nd. I was staggered when I went back and looked at that, that it was as late as November the 2nd. Well, and at the time, we were still in lockdown. Apart from some brief respite, we have been in lockdown ever since. During the brief periods we have been allowed out, the response from Flangothlan residents that the Flangothlan residents I have spoken to has been largely positive with people feeling more secure and more able to safely socially distance if they wish. Unfortunately, the bollards continue to be controversial. <laughs> Councillors, <coughs> we have recently reviewed, uh, received communications from those that want the barriers to be removed and others who want the barriers to stay. Both sides have argued the legitimacy of their case and their point of view. We have even received emails from people who live in other parts of the UK, all over the UK, um, who have a view on the bollards in Flangothlan. All the discussion that has taken place recently has been within the bubble of social media. I believe that to only rely upon Facebook and other social media uh, uh, platforms to seek the views of those who live in the town disenfranchises the majority of Flangothlan re residents who don't use the internet to communicate. Unfortunately, because of the current restrictions, they don't have a voice other than us, yeah, giving, the, giving them a voice, acting on their behalf. And when we have had the opportunity to talk to them in the brief periods when we're not locked down, I believe they've overwhelmingly been in support of the measures that have been taken. The barriers are not permanent. Uh, there seems to be a suggestion that they're there forever. They're not attractive, but they're there to serve a, pen, a, a, a purpose and a functional. Um, they, uh, they're temporary to help residents and visitors socially distance. My reason for bringing this to the council tonight is that shortly, restrictions will be lifted and we will again welcome hundreds and on some days thousands of visitors into our small town with its narrow pavements. We have a duty of care to keep residents and visitors safe and although not ideal and it's only a little bit and I wish we could do more, uh, the Denbyshire plan is trying to do that, it's trying to keep people safe. I believe that is it is an appropriate time for us to consider this in light of the potential lifting of restrictions 
for uh, uh, and, uh, uh, so that we can let Denbyshire County Council know that we still support the temporary measures put in place to make Llangothlan more COVID secure. And I hope that councillors support my proposal. Uh, anybody like to, yeah, comment or say anything? Yeah? Anybody like to comment? Uh, uh, Councillor Gurinley. Bear with. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, yeah. I had to write things down myself because I've got a rubbish memory. Basically, I do support the measures that are put in place and believe they should remain until at least social distancing can cease. My decision is not based on petitions or polls, although one thing is it's great to see people engaging. Mm. Um, but what I'm going on is what residents, local residents, have said to me personally in the past and up to the present day. The vast majority are in favour of them. These measures have a specific purpose to make it easier and safer for people to walk in Castle Street. It's very quiet at the moment. We've no idea how these are actually going to work. Many of the shops are shut, but when restrictions start to lift and life begins to come back to something more normal, locals and visitors should all feel safe walking and shopping. More space on the pavements will encourage people to feel more relaxed hopefully encourage them to shop locally. We have all had to make adjustments to our lives and accept many changes we may not like or enjoy, but keeping ourselves and others safe should be our priority. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sheena. Anybody else? Uh, John? Anybody? Yes, uh, th thank you very much, Councillor Shemina. You've, you've uh, uh, already covered most of the points I was going to raise myself. Uh, I would like to echo everybody else's sentiments who've spoken so far, and that's that the number of people who I have spoken to who seem to be in favour of it compared to against it is about two, two to one, um, give or take. The problem we've had is that the um, uh, temporary barriers have not been used in anger since they were so late in being uh, installed because of objections that they've only been in use during lockdown. Uh, as you rightly say, any day now we're going to start looking towards Easter and raising uh, the, the level of visitor attendance <clears throat> and that will be a good time to see whether they're, they, they're, they're, they're worthwhile or not. However, I'm sure that um, during that time uh, the residents will continue to um, uh, observe the uh, security that it offers them. Yeah, thank you, John. Anybody else like to comment? Bob? Bob, you're still muted, sorry. No, no. As I say, I fully agree with everything that's been said, and it's our duty to look after the residents of Clangocken and try and keep them as safe as possible. Yep. Anybody else? Have the car also to stand yeah. Um, very quickly, uh, so I'm allowed to speak on this because the changes probably don't have a positive effect on my business, but uh, I've got three hats on this. I spent the last two weeks writing my dad's eulogy. He died from COVID two weeks ago. I'm a local resident and I didn't walk or run down the pavements beyond Oak Street all summer because I went around the block. I wasn't happy to. The only times I did, I was in the road with a boat because um, they could see a big orange boat on your shoulder. So that's my personal point of view. I did not feel safe in the summer at all on that section of road. As a business owner, it could have a positive or negative effect, but I think when the town was open, September, October, we were down about 15% through the door, which I think in a worldwide pandemic is pretty good. And we've had a lot of people doing their best to shop local, far more than usual. And that's a been a growing thing through the times of the pandemic. It can be inconvenient to us as a business. We have several pallets a day, a week delivered. So yes, it can be a bit of a pain for delivery drivers, but they're still managing to deliver. So I'm in favor of keeping them. We could tweak them, 
you know, perhaps we can get more access, easier access for disabled people and easier loading options, but they are temporary measures and uh, they need to have the desired effect, which means they need to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Palmer, you're muted, John. No, I'm not. It's free now. Okay. Uh, one of the things that hasn't been raised, and I would like to raise it, is the fact that um, where where the uh, where Castle Street meets Abbey Road, that additional footpath means uh, that barriers there next to uh, the bridge end means that people with uh, problems with mobility can now go along without um, with 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 ease in order to from from places like Port Blanagamless in order to get to the uh, crossing the panda crossing or down to the um, the health center without having to walk down the middle of the road positively as well one of the shopkeepers who uh, has a shop on that stretch just by the the bridge end hotel has commented that it's it it's really good because people can now see his shop uh, because, yeah, uh, before the barriers were put up, uh, it was usually hidden between a van or a car. Uh, Robin. Thank you. Um, and uh, just I agree with many of the comments already. And uh, also to add the perspective of uh, parents, a number have reached out to me and, uh, and emphasised the, the space for buggies have made them feel much space, uh, much safer in the town, uh, much easier to cross uh, the road safely with small children. And that was reiterated in the Chittislow webinars uh, last week as well. So I think there's, there's some good support there. Melvin. They're, um, they're not particularly wide, but they're the best that could be done at the time. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, when, we, when lockdown's over, this town is going to be inundated with people. We know that. It happened in July and August. It was just a, it's a nightmare. They may not be great, but they're better than not having them there at all. Um, yeah. And I just think that it's a no-brainer to leave them. You know, yeah. they're going to have to be there for the summer, at least. Yeah. That's it, you know. I mean, we don't know. COVID isn't over yet. The over the under fifties won't be vaccinated until the end of the summer. You know, this isn't going away for a while. So yeah, I'm all for them. Well, I would be, but there you go. Peter Carroll. Uh, very quickly, I think we should acknowledge that we have received a number of representations uh, from people who've signed up to the uh, Stuart Davis petition. Um, but we've also received representations on the straw poll. Stuart's, peti uh, Stuart's petition only gave people an option of saying they didn't support the measures. Yeah. Um, whereas the straw poll with the yes or no was two thirds in favor of keeping those. Um, yeah. Obviously we don't know who the people are that signed up for either of those. Um, so neither can be seen as representative, but uh, yeah. it's worth bearing in mind that if you don't have a choice to say yes or no, there's not a lot of point in asking the question. Yeah, I think I think I tried to touch on that uh, in, in the in the paragraph in that we've we've had uh, representation from uh, both those people that want the barriers taken away, and also from people who want the barriers to stay, and that's not just on the polls. That's also in emails to us as well. We've had representation from both sides. Um, I'm, I, you know, I'm both sides, both both sides are are, are vociferous in, uh, in 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 their, their claim that theirs is the real view. Yeah, but I think I think uh, as as a council, what we we need to be reflecting on is the fact that we're here to represent all of the people in Clangothlan. Yeah, uh, uh, the many, not the few, so to speak, uh, and and that when you're actually out on the street, or when I am, and from what you said, it's the same for you. Whenever you're out and about, people are saying thank you. Yeah, they, they are, they're brilliant. Yeah, I feel much safer. And some people who weren't coming into town because they were afraid, uh, uh, I I would guess uh, are now yeah happier and more able to come into town.
Um, so, yeah. Anyway, if anybody's got anything else to say, I've got a proposal. Yeah. I propose that Slangotlan Town Council reaffirms its support for the temporary widening of the pavements and other measures undertaken undertaken under the local sustainable response to COVID-19 and that the clerk notify Denbyshire County Council and our county councillors accordingly. Yeah, Melvin's going to second. Yeah, right. Is there anybody who is not in favour of that or who would... No, no, no abstentions. Okay, that's unanimous. Thank you very much for your, for your attention. Uh, yeah, thank you to all those people who have been observing us uh, and yeah um, see you uh, see you all soon